Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. In today's video, I'll be talking about reverb, specifically the reverb in Presonus Studio One version 3 Prime, the free DAW. I'm going to show you how we're going to be able to control the reverb to achieve different results and different effects as the reverb. Reverb is a fantastic tool that you can use to give dimension to your sound, whether if it's a vocal, which is very commonly used, or other instruments. And it will give sort of dimension and depth. The more reverb you have, the further back your instrument will sound. But I'm going to show you how we're going to achieve a front end sound, but at the same time achieve that depthness by using the reverb and this technique that I have. I'm going to show you how we're going to be able to achieve more snappier snare drum using the reverb um, with an, as an example without overriding with too much reverb. So without any further ado, let's get onto my screen on my laptop and I will show you how to do that. I've just loaded Presonus Studio One version 3 Prime, the free DAW, and I have loaded uh, one of my songs in there so I can demonstrate you the reverb effect that uh, I want to achieve with the snare. Let's have a listen to the song in final form and I have to also mention that I have turned the volume up of the snare just to enhance it so you can actually uh, hear what the final result will sound like but a little bit more enhanced. Here we go. You can hear the snare. Okay, so you can hear the snare, how it actually has a reverb and it's really snappy. And that's what I'm going to show you how to achieve that. Let's have a listen without it. As you can hear, the snare is really simple the uh, snare was really no effects nothing just hitting it and I wanted to achieve that a little bit wider and more um, depth into the snare because the snare comes in between each word that I'm singing and I wanted to fill that gap let's have a listen to the snare solo it out as you can hear it's really simple and then and that's what I want to achieve I wanted to have a reverb for the snare to make it big sound really big but I don't want it to actually have it long enough at the same time so it doesn't over you know overpower the rest of the instrument so let me show you how I actually achieve this result Sure, we could have just put in a reverb onto the snare and where it goes, but that's not going to give me the effect that I really wanted to. I wanted to reverb to actually cut off. So let me show you how I have achieved this. I have created a new effects track, call it effects snare. And then over at the snare track, I have added a new send pre-send, so it's uh, before the, the fader volume, that it's going to the effects send and send to effects snare. In effects snare I have channel strip, then mix verb and another channel strip. The mix verb I basically copied from the master reverb effects channel and dragged it across so that they're all similar setting, the same setting as the master reverb, so they sound the same. So let's have a look what channel strip number one does at the top of the list of the chain. I have 100 hertz low cut, so it gets rid of all of the low end. Then I have compression at 100% as fast, and this is what will give the snare a really snappy 
compressed sound. And then I have um, about, you know, high mid minus uh, 3 dB or thereabouts uh, so that it gets rid of some of the brightness of the snare so that it does not overpower my vocal. The mix verb is same as what my master reverb settings are, so I have not touched it there. And the second channel strip, again it has about 200 Hz to get rid of all the low end, even after the reverb. And then it's all flat, but the whole purpose of this channel strip is the expand, which works as a gate. And I have it as a slow. Um, this way it will cut off all of the reverb that's as it's fading out faster than normal. So all of my reverb fade out will fade out much quicker. And that's what it will give me enough space for my vocal to come back into the track. I've just bypassed all of the plugins and then I'll bring them one at a time and we'll be able to hear what difference each plugin in the chain makes. Let's have a listen. All we're having is plain head of the snare. So now let's bring in the first channel strip. As you can hear, it's really snappy and now the difference bypassed. And now the snare is really hitting, really sharp, really quick. So next, let's add the mix verb. So now the compressor at the beginning of the chain, of the first channel strip, really bringing out that really you know, distinct hit that's coming in and the reverb is taking to the rest of it giving that dimension to it. But it's obviously it's too long. The decay of the reverb is too long. So to get rid of that I've added the, t the second channel strip in the chain and if we enable it as you can hear now the reverb is being faded much quicker. This is bypassed. As you can hear, it really brings out, gives a dimension, but it doesn't overpower the rest of the tracks. Well, I hope this trick gave you a good idea for you to try in your next mix to achieve different results using the reverb and to have different effects for it. If it did, give me the thumbs up, that way I know it was helpful for you. Also, as always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you always keep up to date with the latest videos that I upload with lots of hints and ideas for your music creation. You can also visit my website, recordingstudio9.com. There's a lot more information there and heaps of resources for you to download as well. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Cheerio.